Welcome back to the Gabba. This is the second session of play coming up in the Mercantile Mutual Cup game between Queensland and New South Wales. Yesterday at the WACA, Western Australia defeated South Australia. Today, Queensland and New South Wales. Well, Ian Healy, the Queensland captain, put New South Wales into bat here today, and that's the way they finished. Four for 278. Tremendous performance. No one made 100. Yesterday, McPhee at the WACA made 97. Today, Slater for New South Wales made 96. Mark Taylor out for 55. Slater that 96, then Steve Waugh 59 from 53 balls, fastest half century of the two days so far, beating Damien Martin's effort yesterday in Perth. Then Mark Waugh 33 from 16 balls, Richard Chiqui struck 20 from 21, and Greg Matthews 8 from just four deliveries. Seven extras, four for 278 from a full 50 overs, that's the maximum allowed in these Mercantile Mutual Cup games. And the men out today, Taylor, Slater, and the two wars, and the first one dismissed was Mark Taylor. He's got him, yes, just a little edge there. And that's the breakthrough that Queensland needed. Alan Border getting it there for them. Taylor just prodding forward. Really a little juggle, but taking the catch. And New South Wales have lost a wicket. It is just pushing forward here. Just the faintest of edge, little juggle there from Healy. But he gets it. He's very happy indeed. It's in the air. Can he reach it? And it just falls in between the fields from there. Oh, and gone. Steve Ward trying to sneak another run out of Matthew Hayden just lolling the ball back in Ian Healy thinking quick throwing down the stumps and Michael Slater is run out four short of his century tragedy for Michael Slater this ball hit from Steve War lands short of Matthew Hayden down in the outfield the Hayden throw wasn't as strong as he would usually do Steve War sneaking another run and Ian Healy throwing those stumps down Michael Slater short of his ground the end of a magnificent innings. This one high. Dirk Weller makes no mistake. Carl Rackerman gets the wicket he has wanted. Steve Waugh mistiming a pull shot. Weller and Rackerman and Queensland very happy. And again, that bit of extra bounce from Rackerman. Just denying Waugh the room to hit that one. Stepping away a little bit. It's directed straight at the body on the top of the splice. And Wellen takes a good running catch. There's a man under that and should catch it. Does so without uh, what seemed to be a moment of alarm, which we can confirm perhaps on the replay. But Kasperwitz takes the wicket. Mark Waugh is gone. Two century partnerships in that New South Wales innings, four for 278, and some unflattering bowling figures there for Queensland. McDermott had 58 taken from 10, Kasperwitz 56 from 10, and a wicket, one for 44 for Rackerman, none for 45 for Jackson, the left arm spinner. Similar type bowler, Alan Border, one for 48 in eight, and uh, Stuart Law had 23 taken from just two overs. Just a reminder for everyone that uh, what is happening in these Mercantile Mutual Cup games this summer is that just one ball is being used instead of two. It's making a difference to the bowlers already. Uh, the Ashes bash your confidence around a bit. Are you confident now? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, the tour, as I said, didn't go as planned, but uh, I mean, in another respect, I've probably had the best preparation I've ever had for a, a season, you know, with the amount of bowling I did over there in the nets and practice and, and the games I played. So, And I think it showed in, in the couple of games I played in grade cricket, I'm bowling probably better than I have for the first couple of games for a long time. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to just getting uh, a couple of wickets in the next couple of weeks. Are you the secret weapon? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I hope so. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but um, I'll just see how I go from here and hopefully take a few wickets on Sunday and then... We'll see what happens after that. And today's the day for Wayne Holdsworth. Well, it's the start of a season for him. 
He'll be up against Queensland today and then hopefully he'll go on to bigger and better things as the summer goes on. So Holdsworth is out in the centre of the ground now. He's at the ready. The opening batsman for Queensland, Matthew Hayden and Trevor Barsby. And in the commentary box waiting for us is Tony Gregg and alongside him is Simon O'Donnell. Thank you, Richie. And uh, this is going to be very interesting now. It's very important from Queensland's point of view. They're chasing a big score that they get off to a good solid start. A start similar to the one which New South Wales managed to negotiate. This is Hayden. And, uh, straight away, he's onto his front foot there. And uh, it's also going to be very interesting to see these New South Wales fast bowlers. They'll be aware that uh, the three of them, that is the man in your picture now, Wayne Holsworth, and uh, McGrath, as well as Whitney, I'll be aware that one of them may well have to be left out for matches in Sydney. Whitney's loosening up there because uh, that's a bit of a turner down there and they're more likely to play two spinners. So uh, competition is on. Nice and straight. So a lot to play for, Simon. Certainly is, Tony. It will be also good to see young Glenn McGrath out there. There's been big raps on him over the winter months that after his first year of first class cricket that he'll come in in leaps and bounds and challenge for a spot in the Australian test side later in the summer so it'll be a lot of interest to see how he handles the batsman showing some aggression to try and narrow down this target here today it's a good line bowled that one from nice and close as well his back foot nice and close to the stumps so he's bowling from wicket to wicket all he needs to do is just to get it to straighten down the line and he's always got a chance then of getting an lbw just a little bit of swing there Holdsworth, just watch his back foot here coming down nice and close to the stumps there it is there it'll drag through and that's his position now from there the ball just angles just a little bit in you watch it just starting to straighten down the line there and that is good bowling shot into the gap Hayden's away coming back to the third pretty slim line looking Matthew Hayden out there as well pretty hard being a reserve player on a tour of England put on a little bit of weight out there but since he's been back he's obviously been working very hard to get himself nice and trim and taut and terrific Yes, it is difficult. It would have been a difficult four or five months for Matthew Hayden in England, playing second fiddle, but he's got his chance again now, especially here today. He and Trevor Barsby are so important, chasing a total like New South Wales. Got to get a good start. It's of enormous importance for those two players to do well. It's the end of the over. Queensland none for three. Introducing the new Mazda MPV. Room for seven. ABS braking. Great all-round vision. Three-litre V6. The new Mazda MPV multi-purpose vehicle. In a word, it's versatile. Well, it's uh, now going to be Michael Whitney. You see the umpire there holding his arm up. Left arm over the wicket it's going to be. So a bit of variety here in this New South Wales attack as well. And Michael Whitney, a nice sweat up when I met him this morning on the ground. He'd gone out there and got himself nice and loose. He's a bit of protection on both of those knees of his. He's had a lot of trouble with his knees. It's nicely played into the gap on the onside. Set it for two. Yes, uh, 
If you look quite closely at Michael Whitney's knees, you'll notice that the uh, little circle in the front of each of the knees has got heavy padding on both of those knees. You can see he pulls them up every now and again. He's uh, certainly had a tough time of it. angling down the leg side. Mike Whitney has been a great player for New South Wales over the years. He's 34 years of age. But still goes in. He's got a lion's heart. He's best in this competition. Four for 30 versus Tasmania. The SCG. 40 wickets. 35 matches. Real stalwart for New South Wales. Gives everything every time he goes out there. If you're picking a side, he'd always be one of the first in. So you know you will get absolutely everything from him. It's nicely taken by Emery down the leg side. Yes, it's New South Wales' leading wicket takers, a taker in uh, the domestic one day competitions. experience plays for Randwick down in Sydney he has an economy rate of 60.58 so he concedes 60 runs per hundred balls so uh, his economy rate through his career <laughs> worthwhile just um, making a mental note of that Whitney concedes 60 runs per hundred balls and during the season we'll Exposed for you all the economy rates, not just of the players in Australia, but the visitors from New Zealand and South Africa. You'll be able to get a bit of an idea who the tough guys are to score runs off. In the air, but uh, through the field. White ball flying down the ground there towards that long boundary now. That cover, that would have been four here last season. In fact, uh, they've run four anyhow. We haven't seen that too often over the years. And smashed away. They're not going to waste any time. No, there's no time to be wasted. And Matthew Hayden recognising that. A little uppishly. Well through cover point. Well timed, they've run four. Got it. Very important they keep that run rate ticking over. Especially in these early overs of this innings. Again, uppishly played, but square of the wicket on the leg side, and that one's running down towards the boundary. I think it'll probably just get there. Yeah, it's just over the rope now. So four runs for Hayden. Really attacking. Here it is. So that's the end of the over. It's no wicket for 13. Sale of the century. Cole Porter wrote the song, I've Got You. Babe. Australia's favourite quiz. How many members of Mel Gibson's family have appeared on Sale of the Century? Brought to you by Grace Brothers. His father, his sister and his brother. Monday on 9. The Grace Brothers October sale is on now with genuine savings on your favourite brands. There's 35% off all Kayser hosiery. It's on now, so be quick. That's the Grace Brothers October sale for you. Welcome back. Well, there we are. Some uh, really interesting sights out there on the little bit of grass that is left on this ground. Not much of it for the crowd to sit on now. A lot of uh, individual seats have been placed around the ground, which is the way these days. They're making themselves nice and comfortable there. So those are the, all the seats that will no doubt be absolutely packed during the one-day matches. And uh, for that matter, the first three or four days of the test match. A lot more comfortable having individual seats there so folk can actually book their seats in advance. It's the new stand across, taking up a bit of uh, the section that we used to have the hill here. We 
Because there's the new box, the little uh, little one in the background there with corporate boxes in the back. Oh. Well bowled. It was quick and just started to curve out a little bit. Didn't go much, but just a little. Yes, a good delivery from Wayne Holdsworth. Just getting that to straighten on Trevor Barsby. Beat him a little bit for pace as well. Wayne Holdsworth a little bit of confidence. Early wicket. We're doing the world a good after a frustrating tour of England. Really, his first couple of games are enormous importance to get that confidence up. Oh, well bowled again. This is a good spell. Yeah, just going past the outside edge there. If he keeps doing that, there'll come a time when you'll find the outside edge. Only a replay. Just a little bit shorter, that one. Good pace. A little bit of movement. Trevor Barsby will have been through all this before. Played many a game for Queensland. He's a higher score of 76 last year against Western Australia in this competition. Very experienced campaigner. Oh, big appeal. That's got him. Yes, it's good bowling. It straightened down the line, but I must say, Barsby looked a little surprised. Perhaps it was quite close to his bat. Well, he's certainly deserved that wicket. He's uh, beaten him a couple of times. Let's have another look at this uh, big shot here for LBW. Good, good delivery, pitching in line. Trevor Barsby playing across the line, no doubt about it. That's the end of Trevor Barsby this afternoon. Queensland wouldn't have liked to have lost that wicket. And now one for 15. At the Australian International Motor Show at Darling Harbour, you will see before the rest of the world the latest, fastest, sexiest cars and motorcycles that nine different countries can produce. Some of today's most outrageous developments and some of tomorrow's. The Australian International Motor Show at Darling Harbour. The latest cars on earth at the best place in the world. Yeah, I know what I'd like. Oh. I'd like a whole grain cereal, but nothing too heavy. Uh-huh. Or light. Just a nice blend of grains. But it has to be low fat. Uh-huh. With some fruit in it. Not a whole orchard. Just a sprinkling of sultanas and a little honey. I think we can manage that. Thanks. It's the wholesome, truly satisfying taste of wheat, oats and rye that makes it... Just right. Mmm. Mmm. I'll have what she's having. Not too heavy, not too light. It's Kellogg's Just Right. Dirk Wellham is the new batsman. He, of course, uh, was born in New South Wales. He's now living up in Queensland. He's been around for a while. Never scored 100 in this competition. come out to face the music which at the moment is coming in the form of this man he's bowling well too certainly is we play of the Trevor Barsby dismissal not much doubt about this Trevor that little wee bit of experience gave the just look around as if oh I must have hit that or something and you couldn't give that out umpire the umpire did and Trevor left now Dirk's arrived Wayne Holdsworth looking after his scalp as well it's the umpire there, umpire Tony McQuillan, Brisbane schoolmaster. And so the end of a good over, that one, one for 15. I want to play for Australia. What you wanna be with Honey Beats? I'm full of a dream. I'm full of health and energy. With Honey Beats, you can be what you wanna be. I want to be a star. Be what you wanna be with Honey Beats. Be a famous star or race a fast car. Be a champ with a bow. Natural goodness of wheat and honey. Be what you want to be. I want to be a kid again. Sanitary and honey weeds. So there's the comparison after three overs. You see that New South Wales got off to quite a slow start, but the important thing was that they didn't lose any wickets. Oh, and he's got to be a little careful. Whitney at the moment is, uh, if anything, slanting the ball back in towards the left-hander. That was uh, quite close to the off-stump. 
Watch uh, the angle here as Whitney lets it go. Just nips back a little bit and just zips over the top of the off stump. Perhaps just a fraction wide as well. Characteristic of Matthew Hayden is getting on that front foot. He'll be concentrating on doing that out there today. Take the attack up to the opening bowlers of New South Wales. So it's amazing what it does for your own confidence out there. If you can lean on that front foot, get away a couple of boundaries early, which he's done. Growing a lot of confidence. Queensland need a big innings from one of their openers, and Matthew Hayden's now it. Oh, good shot. Smashed that one straight down the pitch. No chance there of Whitney stopping that. It almost hit the stumps at the other end and has gone crashing into the boundary. So a lovely shot, this one from Hayden. He knows exactly what's required. They're reading the situation very well, taking toll of anything that's a little over-pitched. Not the worst delivery from Mike Whitney, just slanting in, and Matthew Hayden getting right through the line of the ball. No hope of stopping that. Again, will do his confidence the world of good. Just a little shorter that time from Whitney. Lovely day up here in Queensland. Just a gentle breeze, some lovely colours around. The jacarandas are out, blossoming. There we are. A lovely... Uh, view that is of some jacarandas in the foreground the eucalyptus trees in the background and uh, here at the ground some pretty lush green grass and a good crowd you can't help but enjoy it when it's built up like that Tony it's just a magnificent day this game here Good crowd in. Matthew Hayden is the tender age of 21. It's his fifth Megantile Mutual Cup match. That's a fair average, 133.5. Highest score of 121. First Western Australia here last year. It's the end of the over. It's one for 90. Tonight. No woman is so beautiful, so special. For the first time. I'd stop seeing the girl. She's not the kind of girl I'd stop seeing. A spell binding through the inquisition of Hitchcock. Take off your class. No. You're just not. The expert witness is your friend. The lawyer is your best friend. The sister's your patient. You think it was me? I know it was. Richard Gere, Kim Basinger, and Yuma Thurman. I didn't tell him anything. Superb edge of the seat suspense in the television premiere of Final Analysis tonight, 8.30 on 9. Welcome back. So they've now gone to one for 19. Well, I'm on strike. He's on the back foot at the moment because at the moment the uh, New South Welshman are certainly steaming in. Wayne Tolsworth is uh, certainly fired up. That's the equation. They need 260 to uh, more runs and uh, another 46 odd overs to go. They don't need to lose any more wickets. Yes, Matthew Hayden so far has been the dominant partner out there. He's played some very aggressive shots. He's from Kingaroy, peanut country. Plays for Valleys here in Brisbane. Very important time now for Dirk Wellham to show his experience. Keep this innings together. There is plenty of experience there. Dirk's been around a long time. Bit of a cricketing nomad, Dirk. He's been all over the joint. 
New South Wales, Tasmania, now up here in Queensland. Me and Mike Whitney played a lot of cricket together in Sydney. They're both 34. Dirk's played 30 domestic one-day internet one-day matches, averaging 26.95. He may well have been a nomad, but uh, he's very much a Queensland bull now. This uh, side has uh, decided to get behind a campaign, the Queensland Bulls. And um, just a few interesting quotes here from John McLean, who was uh, very involved in this um, push by... Queenslanders to try and give this Queensland slide a slightly different Let's watch this delivery it's bang on target again and well played you see he says that our players are fully supportive of the idea and excited to be involved in this first season of the Bulls and uh, John McLean is absolutely certain that uh, by the end of the summer every child and every sports lover in Queensland will be wearing Bulls gear That'll be very well known and appreciated. So there we can see some of the gear there. The Bulls gear hanging up and it'll be sold all around the country. Good over. Just one from it. One for 20. Please, sir. I want some more. More? 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 Please, sir. Potatoes and more. New potatoes and more from Maggi makes choice Tasmanian potatoes more tasty, more cheesy. In no more than ten minutes. You couldn't ask for more. Ask for more? New Maggi potatoes and more. They'll be back for more. Queensland one for 20 now. Hayden, 17 runs of 17 balls. So he's got it totally under control. Willem has been just stuck just a little bit. He's got a hit eight balls so far. This is going to be Whitney again. It's time to Willem. There's just a cut loose there. So he'll come back for two. No, it's gone over. Oh, well, certainly ran across the outfield there. Very quickly. So that uh, relieves the pressure a little bit for Wellham. And Holdsworth hurt himself a little there. That's the strength of Dirk Wellham's. Square cut. Wayne Holdsworth throwing himself at it. And ouch. Bit of rope burn there. On the thigh muscle. It's four boundaries off Mike Whitney's initial overs. He won't be too happy about that. Uh, the old war horse, he'd be just warming into it. He'll get better as the day gets longer. Oh. Dirk Wellham just getting used to Mike Whitney sliding the ball across him. That ball just a little quicker. Dirk taking note of it. Steve Warren has a throw, well backed up. Richard Chiqui. You don't go out of your ground when Steve War gets it. Very quick to think there. Saw Matthew Hayden out of his ground and had a real go. Wasn't far away either. Matthew Hayden rushing back and that has just missed. We would have definitely tested Cole Timmons' eyesight there if that had been a direct hit. This will... Uh... Stephen War is the subject of a very interesting article 
um, which is written by Richie Benno, which appears in Inside Edge, amongst a lot of other articles. He's uh, obviously been the subject of a fair bit of criticism over the years, and there's still a few bullets firing around. Richie Benno examines the war dilemma in Inside Edge. There are uh, quite a few very interesting articles. Dino's war. He's uh, fighting a war on two fronts for Victoria and uh, that war to get back in the test side. Lots of fantastic pictures and there's also the tour guide which uh, is pretty important to a rundown on all the players and a summer TV guide. So for those of you interested in cricket, it really is important if you want to stay in touch to uh, get hold of a copy of Inside Edge, especially this October edition which has, as I said, the summer TV guide and a rundown on all the players involved this year. And a very interesting article on Steve Waugh. Uh, there's also one, Martin the Magician, Martin Crow, that is, who masterminded some of the recent uh, successes in New Zealand, especially the World Cup. Well, that's the end of the over. It's one for 24. Chabote et la belle au bois dormant. The Swatch attraction. Swatch. After six overs, one for 24. Another shot at the stumps there. Certainly in a very aggressive frame of mind. Today, Matthew Hayden, he really is not letting anything go. Closing the face on that one a little bit. Quite to the pitch. Michael Slater, a good piece of fielding. Hugh Hayden showing a good deal of maturity there at the moment. Very important. He's got that start now that he's the one that launches this Queensland innings. Big 100. Just what the doctor ordered. It's an interesting little dilemma faced by Matthew Hayden. He's uh, in a situation where Slater, having played so well, has really cemented down that uh, opening position for the Australian side, and he's got to work out a way to get himself into the side. And uh, I just get the feeling that he's decided he's going to do it through the one-day game. Just, just watching the aggressive way in which he's gone about starting this innings, it may just be that in the back of his mind he's thinking, well, the thing to do here is to really impress at number one. In one day cricket, quite often an opportunity arises in one day cricket to have a go, especially with this new Australian Cricket Board initiative to not take any risks with players in one day internationals, rather making sure that they're right for the test matches. So Aiden may just see that as a little opportunity, a little window there for him to get in there and play some international matches and as a result impress sufficiently to get himself in the test side. That rotation system the Australian Cricket Board are talking about, Tony, is a very interesting one. The amount of cricket being played, they believe players have to be rested but I suppose with the amount of people now watching one day cricket they don't want to be taking too much away from that game either because it is the one people are coming to watch yes I think the intent is probably right a lot of pressure on the players these days and uh, one of the important things is that one picked up there will this be close it's the stumps but he's comfortably home yes I suppose the important thing is that in a five-day test match can't replace a player if you carry an injury into a test match rather place yourself in a position where over five days anything can happen and I suppose it's a bit of a safety valve for them but uh, I agree with you as far as uh, as far as I would be concerned I'd have to I might go quiet on a few of those little niggles 
because there's nothing like being out on the ground when it's full. Having said that, the test match game is certainly, I think, as a result of the Australian recent successes, it's, uh, it's got a tremendous following. They've got 45 days of international cricket. A lot of hard work ahead of them this summer. Oh, and a little fumble there. Will they come back for the second? Yes, Wellham's quick. So back he goes. So five runs off that over. It's one for 29. You know, Mercantile Mutual offers competitive insurance on everything from cars to household and commercial property, as well as some of the country's leading life and disability covers. They have tremendous strength in superannuation, finance and investment. But I reckon it's the award-winning speed and efficiency of their service that's made them so unshakable over the years. So if you're with Mercantile Mutual, rest assured, your future is in good hands. So there's the comparison. One for 29 versus no wicket for 23. Hayden looking good. 19 off 19 balls. And uh, it's going to be Michael Whitney to continue in the commentary box. Richie Benno and Jeff Lawson. Thanks, Tony. Good afternoon, Jeffrey. Good afternoon, Richie. And it is a good afternoon here in Brisbane. A bit of a breeze has just sprung up. Very warm this morning, and I must have had a good morning out there on the hill here at the Gabba. Just taking it easy and watching this Queensland run chase. Matthew Hayden has started in good form. Matthew Hayden would have watched the innings of Michael Slater's with a great deal of interest. Tony Gregg and Simon O'Donnell were talking about the battle between these three New South Wales pacemen, not specifically to get into the Australian side, although that certainly would be their aim as well, Holdsworth, Whitney and McGrath, but also to make certain they hang on to their places in the New South Wales side. There's a lot of competition there, Geoffrey. There certainly is. We see the, the veteran Mike Whitney on the screen at present. He just gets better with age, but we've got these two young men. Of course, Wayne Hullsworth's been around now in his fifth season, but still a young man, and Glenn McGrath, who burst onto the scene last year. A very, very good pace attack. Mike Whitney, most we all know a fair bit about. Wayne Holdsworth, they'd be aware, had an excellent season last year. 50-odd wickets in the Shield competition. An Ashes trip. Not a lot of cricket over there, so he'll be trying very hard indeed to have a good season to try and put his name back in front of the Australian selectors. And just to bowl well for New South Wales, of course. That's always your first aim. And there's Wayne Holdsworth. Started off with some good overs here this morning. Four overs, one for 11. Very good line. Moved the ball away a bit from the right-handers. Trapped to Trevor Bars for LBW with a good ball. That's a pretty good stroke. He's picked it up, just judged the line perfectly. It was round about middle and leg and just drifting away towards the pads. On that uh, long side of the ground, there's always the chance of four runs, which is precisely what they've taken. Well, Dirk Willem this time running the four after Matt Hayden has struck it away. This morning we saw Dirk Willem have a couple of chases down from the gully area to exactly the same spot in the ground in New South Wales on two occasions ran four. Lou McGrath made some good ground out there to pick that one up. Had to hit the cutoff man, the relay throw to Mark War. Safely home. And that ball was the first one I've seen Mike Whitney move away from the left-hander. He's bowled almost exclusively in towards Matt Hayden. That's helped the angle a bit. Makes it a little bit easier for the batsman. Matthew Hayden striking the Willis. This one goes away a lot from the hand. I'm sure Mike Whitney would like to be bowling away from Matthew Hayden towards the slips. Well, there's not really any slips there, just the one gully for this one-day fixture. But a bit harder to score off when they're moving away from you. That's a good shot. 
Good player, this fellow. Couldn't get a go in the test side in England, but still made a thousand runs. And here he's seen Queensland along to one for 37. Top class and sophomore, the Swatch attraction. Swatch. First the Highlander, then the Quickening. Now the legend lives on. Highlander the series, out now at your local video store. One for 37, Queensland chasing the New South Wales target. 278, 279 to win, and at the same stage, New South with none for 25. It's Holdsworth to Wellam. Here at the Gabba, the new Gabba. Friends have been saying to me for years, what's the Gabba like? And I've been saying, well, it's a lovely, intimate little ground, not very big. It's big now, just in that area on the right-hand side of your screen. This is to accommodate uh, the football side. They'll run from the Cricketers Club end way over to that spot we just showed you. That's the Cricketers Club side there with a the re-turfed section. Still a good ground. It'll probably be better when it's all finished, the building work. But um, the phrase, an intimate little ground, is no more. And those changes, definitely for the better, I think, Richie. Used to be pretty tough sitting out on the western side in that afternoon sun. Just around from the scoreboard there. You see the newest of the stands. Just to, just to be a, a vacant area. No, we'll see a little bit of work left to do yet. And a lot more work for Queensland to do out in the middle. New South Wales, 278. Very competitive score on this enlarged Gabba ground. Matthew Hayden is 27, not out. And striking the ball very, very well. Last over from Mike Whitney, a glorious straight drive down the ground. We saw Michael Slater play some on drives and some off drives. It was obvious he had a great deal of class. And Matthew Hayden, very, very similar. Top players. Brad McNamara, we might see him bowl a few medium paces a bit later on. Didn't get a chance with the bat. Well, some deceptive little seamers. Whitney's the fielder down at deep third man. Mark Taylor has kept uh, a tight field. There's six players in the infield, all saving the single. Got uh, plenty of runs to play with. It's been a good spell from Wayne Holdsworth. We see the ball fly in the air. And Mark was very square there at Gully. That ball probably went to a regulation Gully position you'd normally see. Mark War deepish and a little bit square. That's very well bowled. Good Yorker, and uh, it's one for 40. Even if you're not Rob DiCostello, if you're serious about fitness, you need the longer-lasting energy of Kellogg's calcium-enriched sustain, the scientific balance of grains, fruit and nuts, protein, vitamins and controlled sugar, high in complex carbohydrates, but low in fat and salt. So even if you're not Rob DiCostello, or even if you are, you need great tasting Kellogg Sustain, made for the Australian Institute of Sport to keep the energy in your day longer.
One for 40. That's against uh, the Blues, done for 29 at the same stage after nine overs. Now, Steve Waugh has uh, been brought into the attack. Early days, nine overs gone. We'll try that again. Brad McNamara, the man who appeared on your screen just a few moments ago. He's going to ball from the Stanley Street end. Breeze, well, he'll be uh, coming up into it around about fine leg as he runs in towards the batsman. And use the relay throw. And they'll get away with it. Perhaps the cutoff man needs a bit of practice with that one. And Steve Wall threw it over his head. Long chase out. You can see the newly turfed area there where Steve Wall picks it up. Tries to hit the cutoff. Which is Greg Matthews. And over his head. Hayden did very well to get back there because he was committed. I swear from, well, we're on a bad angle here. We're at the Vulture Street end, but I reckon he was more than halfway there. Well, there's a big call of yes early on. And as Hayden gets halfway down, there's followed by several calls of no. And he's a big man, but he turned well. Good piece of feeling by Mark Taylor, who's in a short mid-wicket. He's one of the designated close fieldsmen. Just there on the right of your pitcher. Picked it up and threw on the turn. Oh. As we see, Dirk Wellham, that's three times now, he's actually come down the wicket to Brad McNamara, almost playing him like a spinner. The very first ball, McNamara bowled. Dirk Wellham was down the pitch. A skip and a half. Let's see those early footwork and down he gets. So perhaps the plan is to get after Brad McNamara. McNamara picks him up and spears it into the pads. Rather the fielder. Well, it does look as though uh, they've made McNamara the P. Generally, if you're facing a big total of this kind, you'll seize on one of the opposition bowlers. You reckon might go for plenty. McNamara is not all that quick, but he does move the ball around in the air a bit, and he's had uh, some success in limited overs cricket. Is what you normally described as a, a handy cricketer. Very good last season with New South Wales, particularly in first class cricket, over 20 wickets for a part time bowler. That was an exceptional performance as he's mostly a batsman, batted anywhere from three to six last season. He has opened for New South Wales. So there's bits of everything, bits and pieces, man. Well, that's great running because the man coming in quickly from cover point was almost on the verge of uh, picking that up. It's now one for 46. It's new from Turtle Wax, Color Magic Car Polish. Look, it blends in with your car's color, so as you polish, minor scratches disappear like magic. Just pick the color closest to your car's finish and see how Color Magic highlights the true color and removes imperfections. One easy application leaves a deep gloss shine for up to 12 months. A huge success in the UK and USA. It's now in Australia. New Turtle Wax Colour Magic. Seeing is believing. One for 46. New South Wales at the same stage. None for 38. And the New South Wales total, they got up to 278. A great performance. That's how New South Wales compiled its large total, four for 278. All right, Taylor and Michael Slater getting New South Wales off to a very, very good start. Over 100 for the first wicket. Michael Slater, unlucky to be run out by Ian Healy, attempting the second. It was a good throw from the keeper. Steve Waugh, Mark Waugh kept up the pace. Look at that, Mark Waugh, 33 or 16, including one huge six.
Richard Cheekley, his first game in limited over cricket for New South Wales, 20 off 21. A good contribution by all the batsmen. And Michael Slater, the outstanding performance there, 96, 127 balls. After a bit of a slow start too, Taylor and Slater, the first 10 overs, struggled against a pretty tight attacking Castlewich and McDermott. Michael Slater, an impressive winner with the Australian side and an impressive start to the Australian summer. I'm sure we would have liked the three figures. Nevertheless, it was a good performance by the two Australian openers representing New South Wales. New South Wales skipper obviously forgot the razor blades this morning. Later, the fielder. Michael Slater may have felt some pressure on him coming up here to Queensland to play in front of Matthew Hayden's home crowd. It's one thing playing for Australia and getting support from all those around you. When you're back playing for your state, sometimes that those are barracking for you on one occasion giving you a hard time on others. He certainly replied well with the bat. There they are, Matthew Hayden, a thousand runs without playing a test match in England. Fabulous performance. Now in his third season of first class cricket, he's had two very fine starts. Career average over 50 in first class cricket. Michael Slater, not quite as experienced. And more test match cricket under his belt. Oh, what a catch. Mark that down as one of the best you'll see this summer. Hayden is gone. That is absolutely magnificent. It looked to me as though he might just have slipped fractionally as he was hurling himself away to the right. Well, not much wrong with the stroke, but look at that. Away to his right, the preferred side, admittedly, but they either stick or they don't. And Brad McNamara, very, very pleased with that. An excellent innings comes to a close. Not a lot wrong with the shot. A fabulous catch. Queensland, two for 48. When you choose Optus Mobile, you also get someone like Carol and the Optimizer service. It's Carol's job to make sure that her customers... New batsman is Stuart Law. Comes out to replace Matthew Hayden. Hayden made 31. It's a lovely innings. And uh, brilliant catch. Absolutely brilliant catch to get rid of him. Jeff Lawson was just saying that Brad McNamara keeps chipping in with a few wickets, makes runs. Brilliant fielder. No better evidence than this. Full stretch away to the right. The ball only went perhaps a, a foot or a little over in the air at the whole distance. Not much wrong with the stroke. But if you hit the ball in the air, you pay the penalty. And another piece of fabulous feeling. New South Wales are renowned for being a, an excellent feeling side. And when you think of the, the great fields in the New South Wales side, you think of Mark Waugh and Steve Waugh and Greg Matthews. You don't really think of the Brad McNamara's. It catches like that, the wind matches. That one has escaped Richard Chiqui. It's good running. Lots of twos used to be run at the Gabba because of the size of the ground. Now there are lots of threes. There have been quite a few of four all run today.
Just got his fingertips to that. Well, the Queensland 50 is up on 70 balls. And they almost lost their third wicket as Stuart Law. Well, it's really a good length ball in Holsworth. Fantastic. At full length again. We saw two of that nature in two overs. Been a bit of a surprise. Good effort, though. Two for 52. Automatic attraction. If you're sick of paying too much for insurance, don't get mad, get even. FAI offers green slip insurance from a very low $190. Call FAI, 13 1000. Welcome back. Glenn McGrath replaces Wayne Holsworth at the member's end. Wayne Holsworth, a successful spell, six overs, two for 16. Very impressive spell from Wayne Holsworth. He's replaced by a man that not many people around Australia would have seen. He played six games for New South Wales last year in first class cricket, taking 25 wickets. And an average in the low 20s, and that's very good bowling first up. Six foot five, Glenn McGrath, about 194 centimetres. A bit wiry, a bit thin. Can bowl very sharp. That's well, safely way past uh, square leg. We'll get into that slow area out there, the re-turfed section. Just short of the hill. Oh, oh going for the fourth run and going for it lazily as well no one of the two of them uh, seemed quite certain whether they want to go for it or not the throw came in no need for the relay there he got it in on that long throw into Emery couldn't have been much in it in the run out but uh, law has gone there might be some discussion in, in the dressing room after as to whose fault this is we saw Steve Waugh a couple of over, overs ago miss the cutoff man. And once again, he decides not to take the cutoff. And I think once Dirk Willem saw the throw go over the head of the infielder, that there might be four. Well out. Gee, that's a terrible waste. Three for 55. What do we want from a bank? Loan rate that's really, really low. So we can afford a house that's really, really big. State home loans, 5.5%, cap for 12 months. Alan Border is the new batsman. Coming out now. At a moment of crisis for Queensland, needing 279 to win there, three for 55. Wellam is 10, and Laura just been run out. A very good piece of chasing, fielding, and throwing from Steve Waugh. Never let up for a moment. Ball was picked up and hit past square leg. Now Waugh might have thought for an instant it was going for four, but then he realised it would get into that slow stuff out there. Picked it up, changed hands, and gave it everything with his shoulder into keeper Emery. All this off Glenn McGrath's first ball of his spell. Gets a good hard bounce there near the wicket square area. Stuart Law hardly in the frame. See, that, that's just a great waste of a batsman. You just can't afford to lose batsman chasing a big total like this. That's really a soft dismissal, that. And the pressure falls on the Australian captain, but that's certainly something he's used to. On board his higher score in domestic cricket, domestic one day cricket, is 97. Never made 100 in one day cricket. This may well be just the time. Interesting watching uh, Glenn McGrath bowl here today. 
he's uh, been given the big hype as a possible future Australian bowler, which is very good. He's pleased to see youngsters encouraged in that way. But um, there's quite a bit of it around at the moment. Over in Perth yesterday, Jeffrey and watched uh, Duncan Spencer, who was quite sharp without living up to what was written about him earlier in the week as being possibly one of the fastest in the world at the moment. Yes, it's always difficult, isn't it? You see a young, promising player with some good pace. I mean, everyone likes to see young fast bowlers. You know, automatically, people say, well, this guy will play for Australia. It's got great potential. There's nothing like a bit of experience being out there and playing a shield season or two. Glenn McGrath's played half a season. One thing I like about Glenn McGrath, Richie, is that I think he's got a good cricket brain on those shoulders. Some players, when they first come into the game, they, cut, they take a fair while to come to grips with the tactics and bowling to different batsmen and the different pitches you get in first-class cricket. But Glenn seems to really have that sort of situation well under control. And for a man with so little experience in the game, I think it's a great start. Very level-headed young man. Comes from the country, narrow mine, up in uh, central west of New South Wales. He's got a good technique. Technically, I like so many things about him. Nice rhythmical run-up, good follow-through. A very repeatable action. Doesn't throw the head or the shoulders sideways. Tends to bowl a good line and length and really has got genuine pace. Look at the side on, it's a nice balanced run-up. Doesn't use the front leg all that much. Perhaps not bowling quite as quick in the one-day games as we may see him later in the season. He did nothing wrong in that over. It's three for 56. When I go racing, I use STP, the world famous auto. There's McNamara to Wellham. We're in the 13th over now. This may be the 14th. Two close infieldsmen still required. In the first 15 overs, two fieldsmen must be within 14 metres of the bat and stationary. Well, they won't be stationary now because they're swapping over for the left-hander to get on strike, but they'll settle down shortly, perhaps to mid-wicket and to short cover. Mark Taylor himself coming out of slip, I'm sure he wander into short cover there. Bring Matthews on the other side of the wicket. Now we have got Mark War in the gully and he will probably be the designated stationary fieldsman. Mark Taylor didn't persist with the suits field too long. We saw Wayne Holsworth swing the ball away a, a fraction from the right-handers. But Mark Wall assessed the situation very quickly. I said, well, I don't think there'll be too many nicks here today. And put Miles Fieldsman saving some runs, covering mid-wicket. That's one of the options the captain has to assess pretty quickly. This wicket has been a, a very, very good batting wicket. Not a great deal of pace in it. Very true surface. Mark Taylor there normally watches the game from first slip. He has a third man saving any edge through that area. And that will go down to third man, in fact. And then to Michael Slater. He makes a good throw. And Mark Taylor feels that he can save runs at mid-wicket and cover. Short mid-wicket and short cover, that is. Have them designated as his close-in fieldsman. And with New South Wales now restricting Queensland to three for 58, he perhaps feels run saving is just as important as wicket taking. Yeah. 
Welcome back to Gabba, as has been the case in many other games. A lot rests squarely on the shoulders of this man at the wicket at the moment, Alan Border. He's been a little ill this week, Alan Border. I was talking to his wife, Jane, yesterday, and she tells me he spent the majority of Friday in bed with the flu. So he'll be feeling the fresher out there this afternoon. Well, Greg, if at this point we could pinpoint the difference between the teams, I think there's one word, and that's fielding. We've seen two brilliant pieces of fielding by New South Wales, which have dismissed the inform Matthew Hayden. Then a great bit of uh, outfielding by Stephen Waugh to run out Stuart Law. So two of the top Queensland players have been dismissed by some excellent fielding. Once again, McNamara in close there from backward square. They certainly are a, a good fielding side, New South Wales. It's been a feature of their cricket in this one-day competition for many years. They work hard on the fielding. gone. McGrath gets the breakthrough once again. Alan Border an inside edge there. Straight through to the keeper. And Queensland now in a lot of trouble. Well this is just a great piece of bowling by McGrath. Since he came on he strayed very rarely and look at this beautiful line and length. Border just trying to dab that one down on the offside. Little inside edge. No trouble for Emery at all. It's Queensland, four for 58. And they call that service. Is that right? <laughs> hey, hey, I've got one. Years of age, playing in his first one-day match for, for the state. And straight away, Glen McGrath right on his line and length after bowling at the left-hander previously. He's adjusted immediately. But look at this beautiful line. Border just shuffling across his crease a bit there. Just that little dab attempted down to third man, but wasn't to be. Just a little bit of movement inside off the off the uh, off that wicket, holding up a little bit off the deck. That's a lovely over from McGrath, a wicket maiden. It's four for fifty-eight. Dogs all over Australia are jumping for joy. They've discovered the great taste of new Lucky Dog in a can. Mm. A chunky, meaty meal that's 100% nutritionally balanced, enriched with vitamins and minerals to keep your dog jumping. New Lucky Dog in a can. I'm lucky, I'm a lucky dog, dog. back it's four for 58 Brad McNamara to continue following to Dirk Willem 19 at the moment 35 deliveries so we'll look to move it along that's a lovely shot this time from Dirk Willem in front of square we'll get three Well, that's all right. I don't think the New South Wales captain will be too worried about that sort of thing at this stage. I don't think he'd be worried at all about uh, keeping the field inside the circle. He's got Queensland on the ropes and he's going for the, for the kill at the moment. Straight to Mark Warwick Gully. There's been a lot of talk 
about this young man McGrath chance to make the test side this year if, if you're going to take a wicket to make the selectors take sit up and take notice that's the one to get the Australian captain Alan Border he'll be feeling very happy about that Glenn McGrath very good effort from this young man very, very big future in the game Glenn McGrath very tall two overs one for four at the stage which is a very good performance indeed that's a good shot doesn't beat Mike Whitney at mid off it's important for Queensland at the moment to do just that is to keep the score ticking over look for the singles take a little bit of pressure off them New South Wales are on top at the moment Dirk Wellham and Martin Love with a big task in front of them. Just have a look at that equation at the moment. There it is. Six wickets in hand. The run rate required 6.35 at the moment. 217 runs to score for Queensland. It's a big task. Well, I'm going for the single. It's through comfortably. It's five off the over. It's four for 62. Glenn McGrath to bowl to Dirk Wellam. Just the single. Well, Willem knows what his job is. It's just to push it round. He's the senior player out there, Martin Love, playing in his first game for Queensland, first one-day game. So we can't expect great things from Martin, although I'm sure he'll contribute. But Dirk's going to be there, solid as a rock at one end, and maybe just giving that little odd word of advice to Martin just to keep his head on the task at, at hand. A very good stroke player Martin Love I was particularly impressed with his performance in the Sheffield Shield final last year against New South Wales his first Sheffield Shield match he made a very good 40 in the first innings for Queensland showed maturity way beyond his years in that particular innings Queensland going to be looking towards him again in this particular match if they're to have any chance Beautifully bowled once again by McGrath. Really bowls a lovely line and length. It's a very tall man, as we mentioned. Quite awkward for the batsman here at the Gabba. I can tell you that a man of Glenn McGrath's size will be coming directly over the top of the sight screens, even though they've had that extra height added upon them. McGrath will be still coming at over the top of the sight screen. Very difficult to pick up. Yes, and the other side to that, Greg, is that judgment of length from tall bowlers is more difficult in any case, so it's made doubly difficult by that fact. And uh, especially these sight, sight screens, I'm a little bit surprised that they haven't uh, done more with this sight screen down the Vulture Street end. Um, Stanley Street end is a little bit improved, but the one down the Vulture Street end is uh, somewhat inadequate in my opinion. So you have that white strip, as we can see there, just above the sight screen. And that's about exactly where McGraw's hand will be coming from. That's beautifully bowled. Right on perfect line and length there, just outside off stump. He's doing a marvellous job in New South Wales here. We'll have a look at this one. Perfect line and length, that. Martin Love playing it pretty well in the end. That completes another very fine over from Glenn McGrath. It's the one run from it. It's four for 64.
Bernie is having more fun. 64 here at the Gabba. Queensland needing 279 to win this match. Needed to get off to a good start. The first wicket to fall, unfortunately, for Queensland was Trevor Barsby. Trapped LBW by Wayne Holsworth there. Beautiful piece of bowling. Holsworth, the strike bowler for New South Wales, doing the job. Well, and pushes this one straight down the ground. Beautifully fielded once again there. Second wicket to fall is that of Matthew Hayden. Edging this one down to third man. Gra doing the fielding. As Matthew Hayden was the second man to fall this morning. And he was out to a magnificent catch from Brad McNamara at backward square, diving way to his right-hand side and taking it in the right hand. The sort of catch that wins matches. Then real disaster for Queensland as Stuart Law was tragically run out attempting a fourth run. And he's hit this one very sweetly, doesn't quite reach the boundary. Steve Wall was chasing after it. Leisurely came back for the fourth. They're in trouble at this stage here. And Law run out going for four. And then the real blow for Queensland when Alan Border was caught behind off the bowling of Glenn McGrath. Crucial wicket that for New South Wales. A very good wicket for that man in your picture there, Glenn McGrath. And Greg, while this has been going on, Brad McNamara has been quietly going about his job at the other end. Bowling one side of the wicket, very economically. And uh, at the moment, Queensland really struggling to score runs. It's no run. Straight to Steve Waugh. Three runs off that over. Queensland, four for 67. And got him again. Ian Healy, first ball, Glenn McGrath knocks the castle over. The young man's full of confidence and Queensland are as shattered as those stumps out there. Well, that certainly changes this game around if New South Wales weren't on top. So they certainly were by a small margin. Those two wickets and two balls, both bowled by Yorkers from Glenn McGrath. Absolutely fabulous piece of bowling. A yeah, good shot side of the length, right up in the block hole. The classic Yorker Ian Healy plays over the top of it. Then McGlough strikes again. It's his third wicket. And now Queensland, real strife, six for 104. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh Brian. Just pick up the phone and we'll rush to your home. We'll get the job done fast because we're the that was quick. And it's all guaranteed. Remember, oh for O'Brien for fast glass replacement. Can a monkey play the game of... To face another young, up-and-coming, maybe superstar, Glenn McGrath. He's on a hat-trick. Craig McDermott to face it. In comes the short leg. Two slips. Backward gully, a gully. Cover point. Mid off. Another Yorker, you think? Oh, there so it, was. it is. It was another Yorker. And it was really right on the button as well. Fantastic piece of bowling from Glenn McGrath. He'll be a happy young man. Should be a happy young man. Been a fantastic spell, this. All goes well. New South Wales, he'll get one of the two spots you'll have at the SCG during Shield Games, Jeff. It's certainly been impressive, Simon, hasn't it? Goes for the Yorker. May have well missed league stump. Ended up being a full toss, but well bowled. 
I know it's only the first game of the season. You always really take a chance when you're making predictions for the year, but it's certainly been a good start from Glenn McGrath. Exactly what he would like, exactly what New South Wales would like. Look at those numbers. In his eighth over now, three for 13. And he and Wayne Holdsworth have been particularly impressive. Holdsworth, two for 16. by Craig McDermott. Friendly stare there from the two quicks. Getting to know each other for a new season. Craig McDermott through his 10 overs this morning. We'll have to get through more than that with the bat this afternoon. The run rate required at the moment, 7.55. A big ask for Queensland with only four wickets in hand. Funny things happen in cricket, but I can see this going no other way than a disaster. And down to third man gets Craig McDermott off the mark for a single. Queensland a six for 105. Australia's love for Calvinator. Reliability and style. Australia's love for Calvinator. Because they go the extra mile. Australians have looked into a Kelvinator than any other fridge. That's simply because they're great-looking, reliable fridges. So before you buy your next fridge, look into a Kelvinator. Australians love a Kelvinator. Guaranteed to raise a smile. Craig McDermott, one of four deliveries. Martin Love, 16 of 33. There's your comparison. Queensland, six for 105. New South Wales, one for 109. Run rates are close enough, but wickets were always going to be a problem as they started losing them in the middle of this innings. Shattering over the last for Queensland. New South Wales speedster Glenn McGrath cut right through them. Interesting to see Craig McDermott's batting attitude here to Greg Matthews, Jeff. Well, both the Queensland batsmen have got to work out what their approach will be. There's plenty of overs left. I would suggest the possibility of a victory would be extremely slim. But do you have a swing and hit a few up in the air, try to have a few big hits and eventually concede? Try and push it around, occupy the crease. Under those circumstances, of course, you almost uh, concede the victory to New South Wales and get a bit of batting practice. McDermott uh, is very much the senior man out there, not so much from a batting point of view. It'd be good if you use the face of the bat rather than the end. It's always difficult playing cricket with the end of the cricket bat. Obviously, Craig McDermott thinks uh, four or five big hits might change the game around. Greg Matthews is throwing the ball up, enticing Craig McDermott to play those strokes. Mark Taylor hasn't made a change to the field, even though he's well on top. Just four in the circle, five out. We see Craig the boundary McDermott. riders on the leg side. Arm ball there from Greg Matthews. The next one, if Greg Matthews gives it a bit of air, we could see it departing if he hits it well enough. Well into the blue sky. Possibly the brute force Billy can have well into the night. Interesting how he reacts if the next one gets a little bit of fresh air up there. I think he might try and put it right out of the ballpark. That is high, isn't it? This will be a great catch. If you get a hand on it. Mike Whitney thinks it's funny, Greg Matthews may not. That's the end of the over. Six for 100. Well, that was the easiest money I've ever won. Back to Sanity, Glenn McGrath. Oh, beautifully this afternoon to Martin Love. This is very interesting. Craig McDermott had that big swing. It did go up into the 
lovely blue sky. Mike Whitney came around and just as it got close, he decided to genuflect and uh, couldn't quite get it. <laughs> Brad McNamara is back up. Sign of a professional side, though, Simon, when Brad's there to cover for Mike, just in case those kind of things happen. Could be the sign of a professional side, or they think there's an imminent weakness there in that catching department. And if I, I just might take this opportunity to uh, send a good... A get better quick wish, a uh, young man from the University of New South Wales Cricket Club, Matt Doherty was up here playing university cricket a couple of weeks ago, was involved in a car accident, has been seriously ill in the Mata Hospital, just down the road here from the Gabba. So Matt, if you've got the cricket tuned in, good luck mate, hope it all comes well for you. All the blokes of the club are hoping you do well. Has to be very close, but I think just fading down the leg side. I'm just playing a little across Craig McDermott, I should say. Oh, sorry. Oh, benefit of the doubt. Just. Well, pretty close. Obviously, umpire McCullen thought it was drifting leg side. Craig McDermott was certainly playing in that fashion, but worth a shout. We saw Phil Emery actually just sneak down the leg side from behind the stumps, but definitely worth a shout, that one. This will be out. And so it is. Mark Taylor, away from first leap, mid off this time, takes the catch. A lot easier one than Mike Whitney faced in the last over. Queensland lose their eighth wicket, that of Craig McDermott. There's been some great batting from the New South Welshman earlier, but Glenn McGrath looks up the man of the match here. Pretty soft dismissal from Craig McDermott. Little chip shot to the New South Wales captain. Say Queensland are in trouble is an understatement. Another senior player. Leaves the field. Queensland now seven for 108. Tuesday, Channel 9 serves up a gigantic. Back to the Gabba. Michael Kasperitz goes out to join Martin Love. Glenn McGrath is having a field day. Take you through this next session of play. Richie Benno will be joined by Greg Ritchie. Simon, good afternoon, everyone. Love is 70. Kasperwitz is off the mark. The dismissal of Craig McDermott. Right on line again, Glenn McGrath. McDermott looking to hit over the top. Doesn't get anywhere near enough. Bat on it and a pretty easy catch that to, to Mark Taylor. He's got the right idea, Craig McDermott, there. Unfortunately, the timing wasn't there. The end of a good over from uh, Glenn McGrath. Done very well out there. And it's 7 for 109. Now, Love is taking strike. Matthews is the bowler from the Stanley Street end. Matthews bowling into a nice breeze. He's been able to give the ball a bit of air and uh, he's been allowed to do that because of the circumstances of the game. There's two more to love, takes him on to 20. He's one of the promising young players around at the moment. Made a good impression last summer. Uh, the fielder. Uh, Queensland 7 for 112 and uh, that's in reply to the 278 made by New South Wales. Hayden was out for 31, batted very well. Barsby 2, Wellham 49. Then Stuart Law 4, run out. Going for the fourth run. Border for 1, Healy a first baller, McDermott for 3. Love is 21, Kasperwitz no score. And that's what happened with New South Wales earlier in the day. Queensland won the toss and put them in. Lovely batting track here. Credit to the curator. Four for 278 in all. 
with uh, Taylor 55 and Slater 96 at the start. And a brilliant partnership in that uh, New South Wales innings between uh, Slater and Steve War. They put on 106, and uh, New South Wales finished up at 4 for 278, setting a run rate for Queensland of 5.56 per over. Oh. Nice drift there. It uh, went from round about off stump to a foot outside in the air and then spun back, found the inside edge, and uh, it's 7 for 113. You know, Mercandale Mutual offers competitive... 113. Not much difference in the runs, but there's plenty of difference in the wickets there. Kasperwitz is taking a strike now, and McGraw is the bowler. required is uh, 8.36 it's uh, well out of reach of Queensland where they're going at the moment their current run rate is just 3.74 it's been a disappointing batting performance by the Queenslanders today coach Jeff Thompson he very disappointed with their effort they've put in a lot of work pre-season a big build up to this match against the arch enemy in New South Wales. Always a lot of rivalry between these two teams. And really, their batting has let them down. It's unfortunate for the likes of Kasparwich, etc., to be in this situation. There's a good Yorker from McGrath. Another beautiful piece of bowling here from McGrath. He's used that ball very well this afternoon. The Yorker got Ian Healy with a beauty just a little while ago. Big tall man that, who can bowl Yorkers like that. It's very difficult for any batsman, let alone someone like Michael Kasperwich's ability with the bat. Not really a recognised batter. This Glenn McGrath has bowled so straight this afternoon. He hasn't given the batsman anything wide to hit. He's bowled a lovely line in length. And it was a feature of his bowling last year, the Shield final as well, where he took some wickets. But there's his figures. Nine overs, four wickets for 16. That's a fantastic effort. South Wales fielders still getting stuck in out there, even though they're on top. Just a reminder about uh, the match coming up at Lila Hill in Perth. That's on Tuesday, October 19. It's the Australian Cricket Board Chairman's 11 against New Zealand. New Zealand skipper by Martin Crowe. Jeff Marsh is the skipper. Sir Richard Hadley, Dennis Lilly, Jeff Thompson, David Boone, and Dean Jones. Those five players are all guests. Then Justin Langer, Damien Martin, Tom Moody, Tim Zura, and Brendan Julian. October 19 and more information about that match when we come back from the break with Queensland 7 for 114 innings Queensland 7 for 114 he'll drift the ball away from the right handers in the air and spin it back If that was a leg by, that was certainly a justified appeal, I'd have thought. Let's have a look at this again. And the foot down. Let's hit him, hit him on the back leg. Be just outside the line of off stump. Oh. 
down the ground this time. It's the one to Michael Whitney. Just back to that match at uh, Lilac Hill. It's a beautiful ground, Lilac Hill, on the banks of the Swan River. That's a good side. It's going to be a festival match. And uh, it's located on the Swan River where Captain Sterling first landed in Western Australia. Catch it! And uh, there are 6,000 tickets printed. 42 sponsor sites already have been sold around the ground. Delightful little spot. They had a match there against England two or three years ago as the starter to the tour, and they had 10,000 people there. So that's a tremendous fixture coming up, the first of the season against New Zealand. Well, a soft dismissal, a very, very soft dismissal. Kasperwitz is out, caught at square leg, just a little nudge around the corner. Mark War, the fielder. He's taken some better ones than that in his time, I can assure you. Here it is once again. It's going for the big hoik. Gets the bottom edge on it, straight to Mark War. He won't hit one to a more safer fieldsman than Mark War. It's eight for 116. For the millions of children hit by war and famine, lunch is something that is simply out of reach. That's why we at Save the Children Fund are asking you to skip a lunch over the next few days, and with the money you save, make a donation, so we can give children lunch and a whole lot more. Send your tax-deductible donation to Save the Children Fund, 80 Erskine Street, Sydney, or phone. Our number is in the white pages. It's uh, 8 for 116 here. Queensland having problems against New South Wales. Some of them of their own making because they put New South Wales into bat. It's Paul Jackson is the new batsman. Yeah. I'm sure he wouldn't have expected to be in at the 32nd over. And I'm sure that coach Jeff Thompson wouldn't have expected Paul Jackson to be in at the 32nd over. There's been a few indifferent shots played this afternoon. All didn't start well from when Queensland first asked New South Wales to bat first this morning. And coach Geoffrey Thompson is not going to be too happy. This is the sort of shot that he won't be too happy about. Kasperwich going for the hoik and straight to Mark War into the buckets. And the Bulls, their first day out as the Bulls today, have been a little disappointing. Being a country boy, I can remember going to a few rodeos where some of the bulls didn't perform to the best of their abilities. They were taken out the back and giving a bit of a lashing with a stick or whatever. I would dare say that Geoffrey Thompson will be taking some of his bulls into the dressing room and giving them a lashing of a different sort with the tongue. They call it gelding in modern day parlance. It's uh, eight for 116. 8 for 116. Michael Whitney's coming back now. And McGrath finished his spell. It was a good performance from him. Ten overs, two maidens, four for 17. Some of the New South Wales uh, bowlers won't get their full ration out there today. McGrath is one who's got through his full ten overs. He's the only one at the moment. Holdsworth, six. He bowled pretty well. Six overs, no maidens, two for 16. Here's Whitney's first ball in the new spell. Whitney wasn't interested. <laughs> Wicketkeeper was. Yes, good performance from McGrath. Four for 17 in 10 overs. Apart from the wickets, he also uh, bowled pretty well. I would reckon one of the things Queensland uh, might find most disappointing, Greg, would be the fact that they haven't got through their 50 overs. They may still do, into over number 33 now, but they don't look as though they're going to bat out their 50 overs on a beautiful pitch. Just the one down to third man. It's exactly right. This wicket this morning was absolutely tailor-made for one-day cricket. Just have a look at it there on the screen. Very, very flat. Not a lot of grass on it. 
Quite a strange decision, I think, to see Ian Healy ask New South Wales to bat first. He must have thought there was going to be a little bit in it. And the New South Wales batsmen showed that there wasn't too much in it at all. They batted magnificently this morning, built up runs in partnerships, and really went about their work in a very professional manner. There was no panic, just steady build up, putting the bad ball away. Unfortunately, Queensland haven't done the same this afternoon. The batting has been very indifferent. We saw Matthew Hayden really look like he could score a lot of runs here today, but unfortunately he was dismissed by a great catch from McNamara early on. But apart from Hayden and Dirk Wellham, who made 49, although off 71 balls, there hasn't been a lot of resolve in the Queensland batting. Young man out there at the moment, Martin Love, has done an excellent job today. He's in a no win situation at the moment, although stranger things have happened. A little bit difficult for the inexperienced Love to quite know what to do here. He should still try and be as positive as he can, still play his shots, and as Richie mentioned, try and bat out the 50 overs to save something for, for the Queenslanders. Also to boost his own confidence. experience from Martin Love out there. He's only a youngster in the game and he'll get nothing from the New South Wales bowlers and fielders. They'll want to knock him over even though that's the way the run rate looks and the Queenslanders are in trouble with all the blue blobs there on uh, that graph. Martin Love will still find that Whitney and every other bowler is boring in at him, trying to knock him over. The shortest time possible. Just like that. Eight for 118. Totally new connector pens. Wow, yeah. Pens made in Australia. Faber connector pens with a wide range of colours. Long lasting, washable and very safe. Connector pens. Connect them. So don't just write, have fun. Only from Faber-Castell. Australian made and better. Yeah. Out now. Nine for 118. Love is 23, not out. And this is the way the eighth wicket fell. Paul Jackson. Pushing forward at that delivery. No doubt about it. Inside edge onto the pad. And Taylor taking a... Pretty simple catch, but a very good piece of bowling. You'll see him just lunge right forward as that ball drops. Taylor right in underneath it, and he's a big look of delight on his face. Pretty happy about that, Mark Taylor. It's always nice as a captain. If you bowling for a particular dismissal and it comes off, gives you a lot of enjoyment. Queensland's biggest Santa Gertrudis, Carl Rackerman. Immediately off the mark, Big Carl, chipping one over the infield. Noah wants to stick around out there with Martin Love. Might be a bad idea, or well, might not have been a bad idea earlier either for people to stick around with him and let him see if he could make a half century. Then McGrath was the fielder there. Now, Matthews to love. Yeah. Whitney the fielder. Twenty four runs to Martin Love, forty six balls. Very disappointing 
And as Richie mentioned, no one has stuck around with him. He's done a good job for Queensland today. Carl Rackerman's gone for a big one. Is he? Oh, that has just missed that mercantile mutual sign. And Carl Rackerman could have bought a few Santa Gertrudas bulls had it hit that. Matthew's laughing. Big Carl. Full face of the bat, one foot down the wicket, and gave it everything. And let's have a look at this. Oh, some six feet, two metres wide of that sign. Unlucky. Well, that's over the top of the man at uh, deep mid wicket. Four more, so Rackman uh, is concentrating solely on attack here. Matthews won't mind that. I reckon he can uh, pick up another wicket. Maybe he's thinking that it's a good idea if Martin Love sticks around with him. He might still be thinking he can get these. Big whoosh, Glenn McGrath coming in a little bit. Four runs. Not too clever, Carl. Nine for 130. For 130. Michael Whitney will bowl from the Vulture Street end. Conditions have been great here today. Quite warm, around about uh, 24, 25 degrees. And uh, a gentle breeze blowing. So around about a, a nor'easterly. This is Whitney. And bowling to love. There's the equation. It's um, 149 runs required. The run rate, 9.41. I don't think Carl Rackerman's going to leave us wondering, wondering whether he can make them or not. That's very well bowled because he's bowling to the recognised batsman now. And he slipped that just past the outside edge. Great piece of bowling, this from Michael Whitney. It's really his stock ball, the one he angles across the right-hander as the ball gets a bit older. Just brings the fingers down on the ball, gets a little movement off the wicket, and pitches it perfectly. Steve War is the man in at uh, mid-wicket. Batted brilliantly for New South Wales. Tremendous performance from him coming in at number three. Made 59 from just 53 balls. Big partnership with um, Michael Slater. Slater top scored with 96. runs and no wickets for Michael Whitney. The wicket takers, Matthews has two, Holdsworth two and McGrath four. It's the single and that'll bring Rackerman down on to strike. There's been some good quality cricket played the two days of uh, these Mercantile Mutual Cup games in Perth yesterday at the Wacker. Scores of uh, 281 against 260. A lot of runs made and made um, in high-class fashion as well. Bowlers had a torrid time over in uh, Perth and Queensland bowlers did here today as well. Uh, just about carved uh, Carlos in two. It's over and it's nine for 131.
the attack down the ground continues trying to smash Matthews over the straight boundaries just a slight adjustment there to Matthews's field Just a little bit of turn for him there, Peter. He's tossing it up a little bit. Yes, now comes the interesting bit, Tony. I think uh, Carl's not going to leave us in any doubt as to whether he can uh, work one over the fence. I'm sure that's his aim. Here he is just leaning back and pushing that one through the point area. Easy single there. So Rackerman looking around, just uh, making sure where the targets are here. And down the ground he goes again. This is into the gap. Or will it be caught? It's it's going to be over the top. That's a magnificent hit by Rackerman. Way over the top she goes. Right off the meat of the bat. That's a good bat he's got. It's a bit more like a Santa Catrudas pool. Here it is. Matthew's really tossing this one up. And he middles that one beautifully. It's a long boundary out there. Certainly is. That might have taken a bit of the ball. Landed in the concrete down there. There's another one from Matthews. Tosses it up again. He smashed this one straight down the ground again. Another biggie. What a good shot that was. Oh, there we go. Paul Rackerman having a field day out there with the bat. He just refuses to miss hit one. Look at this. Another great hit. Just getting it on the up. Straight over the 4X sign. 15 rows back at least. Listen, one of those Queenslanders wanted to go for the catch. That's not a bad strike rate. They're all spread out a bit. You can't go too far over the line. Anyhow, Matthews again. Will he toss this up? He has, and he's gone for it again. This is in the air as well. It's bouncing down towards square leg. And one of the targets down there, but uh, that one not quite getting in. So he'll be going for the fastest 50 here as well, probably. Going for the targets for the $10,000. Four extra targets have been added uh, to the Mercantile Mutual Cup. It's the uh, hit the sign competition. one of them at square leg the sign uh, is not hit in any game the prize money will jackpot by 10,000 until it's won so it could jackpot to 170,000 by the time the final comes around oh and uh, he missed that one so the end of an eventful over 9 to 146 your child could have serious learning problems going undetected. Critics point to severe flaws in teaching methods, claiming Sydney schools must get back to base. So welcome back. It's uh, 36 overs have been bowled in, 9 for 146. Michael Whitney getting ready to charge in there, but the batsman not quite ready. I think one or two of the fieldsmen not quite in place. So Whitney has been slanting the ball out just a little bit. Tony, I'll tell you one thing that can become a little bit significant with all this big hitting we're seeing towards the end of the innings. Even though Queensland are unlikely to win from this position, it's certainly getting their score up closer to the uh, to the New South Wales score, and therefore, in the event that they finish on equal points with another side, their net run rate will become important towards the end of the uh, Mercantile Mutual Cup competition. Yes, they missed out last time as a result of it. That's nicely played. Into the gap, yes, it's running away down into the shadows. 
Under this, Leslie Wilton stand there and into the fence for four. That's the all count. Yes, yeah, so well, this is a nice bit of class from Love. Just waits on it, just on the leg stump there, and he just leans on that ball through the gap. Beautifully timed, weight in the right position. Not much the fielders can do about that. Let's just watch this. Nicely watched right onto the meat of the bat there, and good placement. So Whitney again, bowling to Love. It's away on the offside. Well, it's going to be Kyle Rackerman now, and uh, Whitney caused him a problem with two last over. I think Kyle probably a little happier facing the off-spinner. Have a look at him. He's really looking at this bat of his with uh, a sort of mysterious look on his face. I'm not too sure whether he's just got an absolutely magnificent bat or perhaps there's a little bit of a chip there. Something's happened to it, which will disappoint him a little bit because I've never seen him hit quite so cleanly as this. There we are. He's uh, in position now, ready to face Michael Whitney. Nice new bat for the start of the season. Oh, he's bowled him! Neck and crop. It was straight, it was up, and back went the off-star. There it is, the perfect ball to the tail ender. Straight, nice and straight, nice and full. Rackerman looking for that ball that he can pick up and hoik over the fence or into the, into the outfield, but no, it wasn't to be. Stepping away, trying to give himself a little bit of room. And there it is, there's the result. Giving himself a little bit, trying to have that big windy whoosh. You can't do that to Yorkers all over Red Rover. That's a good delivery there. Rackerman having had a bit of fun. Retiring out of the dressing room. A little chat there to Steve War. So a tremendous victory this to New South Wales. They've played well from the word go. And Greg Matthews out there obliging one or two of the fans that have come into the ground to watch today. It's great team performance this. Really, although we had our man of the match, Glenn McGrath, bowling beautifully, everyone did their job. The batsmen were uh, very effective. Nothing too spectacular in the early stages, but good basic batting technique. And then when they got into the field, they just showed that little bit of extra class in the field. A couple of great fielding dismissals. Really put Queensland back early. And then McGrath's fine bowling effort made all the difference. So they've won this match by 127 runs. Very good uh, victory that for New South Wales. And we'll be back here at the Gabba in just a moment with Richie Benno. Wales, the margin over Queensland was 127 runs. Back to this morning, let's have a look at the card for the New South Wales innings. They were put into bat by Queensland. Ian Healy won the toss and uh, told Mark Taylor they could go in first. Taylor did that with Slater and they proceeded to add 104 for the opening stand from 157 balls. It was a good performance. Taylor made 55 and Slater 96. Then Steve Waugh 59 and Mark Waugh 33. Mark Waugh 33 from just 16 balls faced. The New South Wales side were giving it a real thrash at that stage. Richard Cheekwe played well, 20 from 21 balls, and Greg Matthews 8 from just 4. 4 for 278 with 7 extras there, and the full 50 overs used up, which was more than Queensland did. And just to look now at the Queensland bowling, they took some hammer. They started off pretty well, but uh, couldn't hold it together. The fielding wasn't absolutely A1 class. McDermott had 58 taken from 10. Kasperwitz 56 from 10 and took a wicket. One for 44 from 10 for Rackerman. None for 45 for Jackson. One for 48 for Border. And Stuart Law, none for 23 from two overs. First man out in the New South Wales innings was Mark Taylor. Got him, yes, just a little edge there. And that's the breakthrough that Queensland needed. Alan Border getting it there for them. Taylor just trotting forward. Nearly a little juggle, but taking the catch. And New South Wales have lost a wicket. It is just pushing forward here. Just the faintest of edge, little juggle there from Healy. But he gets it. He's very happy indeed. in the air, can he reach it? 
just falls in between the fields from there. Oh, and gone. Steve Waugh trying to sneak another run out of Matthew Hayden, just lolling the ball back in. Ian Healy thinking quick, throwing down the stumps. And Michael Slater is run out four short of his century. Tragedy for Michael Slater. This ball hit from Steve Waugh, lands short of Matthew Hayden down in the outfield. The Hayden throw wasn't as strong as he would usually do. Steve Waugh sneaking another run and Ian Healy throwing those stumps down. Michael Slater short of his ground. The end of a magnificent innings. This one high. Dirk Weller makes no mistake. Carl Rackerman gets the wicket he has wanted. Steve Waugh mistiming a full shot. Well, and Rackerman and Queensland very happy. And again, that bit of extra bounce from Rackerman. Just denying Waugh the room to hit that one. Stepping away a little bit. It's directed straight at the body on the top of the splice. And Wellham takes a good running catch. There's a man under that and should catch it. Does so without uh, what seemed to be a moment of alarm, which we can confirm perhaps on the replay. But Kasperwitz takes the wicket. Mark Waugh is gone. And that's the way New South Wales finished up after their 50 overs. Four for 278, a good even performance there. And they set Queensland 279 to make it a run rate, an asking rate of 5.56. And they weren't equal to that. They got away to a pretty ordinary start. Hayden played well with 31 from 34 balls faced and Wellham 49 from 71. But it was a real struggle from then. And Martin Love finished up unbeaten on 31. And the crucial thing that will cause such disappointment in the Queensland dressing room this afternoon, I reckon, is that they used up only 36.4 overs of their possible 50, and that on a beautiful batting track. They were all out for 151. Rackerman hit lustily at the end for 25. He was severe on Greg Matthews, but the game was all but over then. It took him just 10 balls to make the 25. Now, a good performance from the New South Wales bowlers, three of them taking uh, two, four, and two wickets. Holdsworth, two for 16 from six overs. Then uh, Whitney had one for 34 from 6.4. McNamara, none for 31 from 6. McGrath was outstanding, 10 overs, two maidens, 4 for 17. And Greg Matthews, 8 overs, no maiden, 2 for 52. But I can assure you he bowled much better than those figures. So the first man out in the Queensland innings, Trevor Barsby. Oh, big appeal, that's got him. Yes, it's good bowling. It straightened down the line, but I must say, Bosby looked a little surprised. Perhaps it was quite close to his bat. Good, good delivery, pitching in line. Trevor Barsby playing across the line, no doubt about it. That's the end of Trevor Barsby this afternoon. Oh, what a catch. Mark that down as one of the best you'll see this summer. Hayden is gone. That is absolutely magnificent. It looked to me as though he might just have slipped fractionally as he was hurling himself away to the right. Well, not much wrong with the stroke, but look at that. Away to his right, the preferred side admittedly, but they either stick or they don't. And Brad McNamara very, very pleased with that. safely way past uh, square leg you get into that slow area out there the re-turf section just short of the hill oh, oh, going for the fourth run and going for it lazily as well no one the two of them uh, seemed quite certain whether they want to go for it or not there might be some discussion in, in the dressing room after as to whose fault this is we saw Steve Waugh a couple of over, overs ago miss the cutoff man. And once again, he decides not to take the cutoff. And I think once Dirk Willem saw the throw go over the head of the infielder, but there might be four. Well out. Gee, that's a terrible waste. It's a little edge and he's gone. 
McGrath gets the breakthrough once again. Alan Border, an inside edge there. Straight through to the keeper. And Queensland now in a lot of trouble. Well, this is just a great piece of bowling by McGrath. Since he came on, he strayed very rarely. And look at this beautiful line of length. Board just trying to dab that one down on the offside. A little inside edge. No trouble for Emery at all. And it is costly again because that's five down. Dirk well and bowled by Glenn McGrath. Coming down the wicket. Very well bowled from the young speedster. Hit right on the button. And Queensland now in even more desperate trouble. Glenn McGrath has been bowling particularly well. Mixing up his length to Dirk Wellham. Dirk Wellham has come down the pitch a couple of times. This time McGrath goes for the full one. And got him again. Ian Healy, first ball. Glenn McGrath knocks the castle over. The young man's full of confidence. And Queensland are as shattered as those stumps out there. Well, that certainly changes this game around if New South Wales weren't on top. So you certainly were by a small margin. Those two wickets and two balls, both bowled by Yorkers from Glenn McGrath. This will be out. And so it is. Mark Taylor, away from first seat, mid-off this time, takes the catch. A lot easier one than Mike Whitney faced in the last over. Queensland lose their eighth wicket, that of Craig McDermott. There's been some great batting from the New South Welshman earlier, but Glenn McGrath looks up the man of the match here. Pretty soft dismissal from Craig McDermott. A little chip shot to the New South Wales captain. That was uh, seven for 108 when McDermott was out. Kasperwitz was the next to go, well caught by Mark Waugh. Just uh, in front of square leg, Matthews was the bowler. Kasperwitz out for two. Very safe hands, Mark Waugh. He's taken uh, a lot more difficult chances than that. Then Paul Jackson. Inside edge on pad. Mark Taylor had put himself in there close in on the offside. Good captaincy and excellent bowling from uh, Greg Matthews. And finally, Michael Whitney knocked over Carl Rackerman, who'd made 25 from just 10 balls faced, was severe on Greg Matthews. And uh, the innings finished at 151. Rackerman 25. And it left Martin Love unbeaten on 31. He faced only 56 balls. And I just make the point again that. Uh, in the middle of, or the bottom middle of uh, that scorecard, it says 36.4 overs, and uh, that's not quite good enough on a very good pitch in excellent conditions. So the New South Wales bowling figures, Holdsworth 2 for 16, Whitney 1 for 34, McNamara none for 31, McGrath 4 for 17 from 10 overs and two maidens bowled well, and Matthews 2 for 52 in eight. Now, uh, Glenn McGrath was named man of the match here at the Gabba. A good performance from him. He's confirmed today some of the promise he's shown previously and uh, also just underlined uh, one or two of the nice things that have been said about his bowling over the past uh, few months. So this is the second of the Mercantile Mutual Cup games played this weekend. A double header, one here at the Gabba and the other one yesterday, Saturday, over at the Wacker in Perth. That was between Western Australia and South Australia. Good match too, high scoring game and uh, it set the seal on what should be a good summer of Mercantile Mutual Cup cricket. We're going to show you some highlights of that match now. The Blues quick increased his test chances in his side's demolition of Queensland at the Gabba. Working in the confines of a sales office is a long way from the picturesque grounds of England. But Wayne Holdsworth is still stirred by his Ashes campaign. His 23 tour wickets not as rosy as some critics had forecast. That kicks me on a little bit. I just want to show the people around the place that I can still bowl. And uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose I am using it as a bit of a motivational tour because uh, you know, I don't think I'm forgotten. I'm out to prove everyone wrong. Holdsworth's test bid has started well. Taking two for 16 against Queensland, the Bankstown Quick is continuing the good form that surfaced in pre-season trials. But thoughts of Australian selection remain distant. I'm just concentrating on doing well with New South Wales and taking as many wickets as I can. And whatever happens after, that's a bonus. But uh, you know, if I'm bowling well with the Blues, that's, that's my main aim at the moment. We'll see how we go from there. The first test is only a month away. Australia plays New Zealand in Perth, a favourite hunting ground for the pacemen. Holdsworth joins a long queue of candidates, including teammate Glenn McGrath, whose four wickets yesterday earned him man of the match. Their test hopes are boosted by Merv Hughes' injury and expectations selectors will only choose one spinner. It's basically going to go to whoever puts their hand up and gets the most wickets, I think, for the first couple of games. 
The Blues have three more games before the test team is chosen. And maybe not too far down the track, South Australia's rookie medium pacer Shane Martin may be up. Veteran striker Marshall Soper booked his team a spot in Sunday's final at Marconi Stadium against Sydney United, who beat South Melbourne 5-4 on penalties after scores had been locked at one all. John Casey, Seven Nightly News. And you can see the full interview with Mark Bosnich on Seasons at 9.30 tonight here on Seven. Australia heads into the first round of the Dunhill Cup at St Andrews tonight as...